So we have the we have no method declaration and we do not have it encoded so we don't have the data type declaration. Now uh, hold off on that to a second. So that's how you compose with this is a lot of yuck yuck because you got just a, a boatload of text in here and, and one wrong key or you know if you burp in the middle of typing you might type something wrong. So you want to really the place where you're using a tool like WDSC to compose these things because it's essentially drag and drop or it's uh, it's a, a WYSIWYG type editor where you, you just right click your way through it and you say, um, like right here I could uh, right click on my mouse and say I want to create a new port type. I'm going to call it ordered SV. Okay, now that I got cre that created, I'm going to right click and say I want to create a new sub procedure or operation called ORD calc price. And you right click on that and you say I want to create a new message. And then it creates a message over here and says, okay, what data types do you want? Well, I want an integer and a date, and then you name them. Um, once you've got your port types and messages defined, then you hop over and you create your services. And then if I were to click on, for instance, this uh, SOAP address right here, it would show me the actual address that this web service was going to be at down here in a properties area. And then uh, as a final step, I create a binding that ties all the pieces together, and then it creates this nice little visual piece of uh, graphics that can make sense of it all. And this is a very uh, simple WSDL. Once you get one that's a little bit more complicated, this uh, pictorial form becomes very useful because trying to wade through something where you've got you know, hundreds and hundreds of these lines is just not um, something that you'd want to do without a good solid cup of coffee. So WSDL next is SOAP. SOAP stands for Simple Object Access Protocol. Uh, SOAP, in its simplest form, pun intended, is XML that envelopes your XML that you want to send across the wire. So, SOAP is XML. You've got your business XML, which would be um, like the ORD calc price or the the post address in this case. And um, SOAP is essentially just enveloping it to send it across the wire. Uh, SOAP's main intention is to emulate remote procedure calls. That's essentially why it was built. It was built as a replacement for things like DCOM and CORBA. It, it uh, was recognized that a vast majority of businesses out there had HTTP capabilities available and somebody came up with the bright idea of wanting to do uh, remote procedure calls over the HTTP protocol. So they determined that text would be the best way to send that across the wire and the SOAP uh, specification came into existence. Um, so, in going through the WSDL, we kind of already defined exactly how a SOAP document works, but let's just go through it um, a little more. Uh, in reality, SOAP isn't that simple. There's a lot of underlying technologies that could be implemented in it as far as what the specification allows, but oftentimes are not implemented. Uh, for the most part, what I see when I um, go to different client sites or if I'm uh, consuming another company's web service is that most people just try to get by with being industry uh, compliant and they just slap a, a beginning SOAP envelope and an ending SOAP envelope onto their XML transaction and then leave it at that and then they're, then they're um, compliant with the XML specification. Uh, most times, and for that reason I, I form this opinion, here's an opinion from Aaron Bartell. SOAP for the most part is overkill because people are not using it for necessarily what it's intended for. Uh, Look at all this extra bloat that you have on here. You know, that's just a, a boatload of extra information when in the end it could have all just been something like this, this simple XML request. There's nothing wrong with doing web services like this. You could send this across the wire and you're you're perfectly valid. The only time you get into trouble is if you've got a business partner that gets to uh, say whatever they want and they mandate that you have to do SOAP. Well then you get to do SOAP. Next page. So the parts of a SOAP envelope are fairly straightforward, or the parts of a SOAP document. You've got the main envelope. It's a, a required element, and it's uh, declared something like this. You know, so I could I could call this uh, XML namespace dog breath if I wanted to, and then put dog breath at the beginning of one of these, every one of these. Or I could also make this a default namespace, and then just have uh, the word envelope, header, body, Alt body and envelope if I wanted to pretty it up a little bit because it is important that our XML is pretty, right? Anyways, um, the next 
is an optional element called the header, and you don't see this in place uh, much at all. Uh, some some sites that document this well will say that well, it's a great place to put uh, directives or uh, authentication mechanisms. Well, most times what I find is that people are um, they're they're either doing SSL, you know, on the server side to encrypt the data, and if they're doing any handshaking as far as passphrases or passwords, those are actually built into the body of the XML. And if they really want to get um, uh, secure and uh, have a the most secure handshake that they could, is they'll they'll require that the client side also have an SSL certificate. Excuse me. So they'll be doing client side validation. So the client will. Um, Validate that the server is who they say they are, and the server will validate that the client is who they say they are. The next element is the body element. This is where you're actually um, going to be putting your payload of XML. So if if all you wanted to do was send um, across the wire, but you had a requirement to do SOAP, what you could do is just uh, stick on a pig. Is just take this envelope all the way down to here and slap it on. The beginning and then slap the ending soap envelope tags at the end and you the soap that the last element here is uh, the soap fault tag and it's used to um, just pass back error information that may have happened during the process of the soap envelope you could also use it for any number of uh, purposes for uh, Errors within your RPG code, though I I wouldn't necessarily recommend that because that's not the, the industry standard to go that way. Usually, people will develop their own mechanisms for uh, business logic related errors. So that's SOAP. Now, to make all this work, you have to have something to send it across. So we've got HTTP here, and I'm going to zoom through this because I've got 10 minutes left. HTTP is the protocol used to send things across the wire. You signed on to the web today. You saw HTTP in your browser. Uh, the way it works, and I'm going to show you in two examples here, is that um, you're sending raw text across the wire. In reality, that's, that's all you're doing in regards to sending web services across the wire. So to do an HTTP request, you'll first pass um, what are the HTTP header areas. So it's essentially a name value pair in a lot of these. So you've got um, the property and the value. And then the header will be separated by carriage return line feed. And then you'll get into the content of your uh, request. So this is the actual XML that we're sending across the wire. If this needed to be uh, uh, SOAP capable, we'd slap a, a beginning envelope and an ending envelope onto the beginning and end of it, respectively. And once you send that off to the remote server, um, the remote server reads it in and processes it, does some business logic, and spits out an XML response. And in the response, you'll get um, the response from the HTTP server, which will determine whether or not it uh, was a successful transaction as far as communication goes. And you'll get down to this point where you can then see from a business perspective whether it a successful transaction. And this is just a, a custom tag that uh, was developed according to a, uh, a spec for a customer's needs. So they just need to know that everything went through okay. And that the post address for Embertel was successful. That's H HTTP. That's used at runtime. That's what you use to get your XML from your iSeries machine to the end server. Or that's how somebody gets an XML document from their machine to your iSeries. 